So for example, we have the external intercostals and we have the internal intercostals. Hey guys, welcome to another video. I'm Dr. Gonzalez. And today in this video, we are going to talk about the following topics. But before we get started, don't forget to subscribe, like, and share, because in that way you will never miss a new video when I post it. All right, let's get started. So skeletal muscles produce movements by exerting force on tendons, and these tendons attach to and pull on bones, and movement can occur. Most muscles cross at least one joint and are attached at articulating bones. As you can see in this example, this is the biceps brachii and you got the triceps brachii attached to here the humerus, right? And um, when a muscle contracts, it draws one articulating bone toward the other. So this is the reason why muscles have an origin and an insertion. An origin is the attachment to the stationary bone and an insertion is the attachment to the movable bone. And so the action is gonna take place on the insertions. So for example, in this case, the biceps brachii has an insertion over here and therefore this area of the elbow can move. Here we have some muscles that are known as the arm prime movers, such as the pectoralis major muscle, latissimus dorsi, and deltoid. Notice that three, these three muscles, you have the pectoralis major on the thorax anteriorly, latissimus dorsi is posteriorly on your back, and the deltoid is over the shoulder. In the arm, we also have other muscles that are known as the synergists or fixators, which are muscles that are deeper to the muscles I just show you. And these are additional muscles in the shoulder, girdle, and arm to stabilize and assist in movements of the humerus. So for example, we have the supraspinatus here over the scapula, superior to the spine. We also have the infraspinatus, inferior to the spine on the scapula. We have the teres minor, subscapularis, anterior on the scapula, teres major, and the coracobrachialis. Out of all of those muscles in the arm, we have a group of muscles that we call the rotator cuff, and these muscles of the rotator cuff assist in rotation of the arm and prevent the dislocation of the shoulder joint. So out of those muscles, we had the supraspinatus, infraspinatus, teres minor, and subscapularis as part of the rotator cuff. In the thorax, we have another group of muscles that are deep, and these muscles are part of the shoulder girdle movements, and they are gonna be anterior. For example, we have the subclavius muscle attaching over the clavicle, Pectoralis minor, with an attachment here on the scapulas, and the serratus anterior muscle. Posteriorly, we also have a group of muscles that are known as the shoulder girdle movements. And like I said, they are gonna be located posteriorly in your back. So there is the trapezius muscle, levator scapula, rhomboid major, and rhomboid minor. In the back, we have a group of muscles that are helping the vertebral column. For example, we have the splenius capitis and the splenius cervices. These splenius muscles laterally flex, extend, and rotate the neck. In the back, we also have another group of muscles that are um, called the erector spina. And these are superficial back muscles that act as prime movers in the extension of the vertebral column. This muscle, erector spina, it's divided into three parts. We have the spinalis, longissimus, and iliocostalis. Out of all of the muscles in our back, we have some that are very deep muscles. For example, we have the semispinalis muscles that are deep back muscles that extend and rotate the vertebral column, as well as the rotories. These rotories 
are uh, deep back muscles that extend and rotate the vertebral column. We also have muscles known as the spinal flexors, such as the longus capitis and longus coli. These muscles will flex the neck and the quadratus lumborum, which is a muscle that will flex the vertebral column. Now we also have a group of muscles that are part of your respiration and these are muscles located in the thorax. So for example, we have the external intercostals and we have the internal intercostals deep to those external intercostals. And there's also this one called the diaphragm, which is the prime mover of inspiration. Meanwhile, the external intercostals assist in inspiration and the, in the internal intercostals assist in forced expiration. In the abdomen, anteriorly, we have muscles that have several functions. For example, some of these muscles will be compressing and protecting the viscera that we have inside our abdomen. And also these muscles can aid in forced respiration and they can also work in rotation of the trunk. For example, we have the outermost muscle, which is the external oblique. And if you notice, the fibers are going down, kind of like when you put your hands on your pockets. Then we have the rectus abdominis, which is also known as the six pack. We have the internal oblique muscle, which the fibers go in the contrary direction to the external oblique. And notice how both of these muscles can also go from the anterior wall of the abdomen all the way to the posterior wall of the abdomen. And then we have the transverse abdominis. In the pelvis, the levator ani and the coccygeus are the muscles that form the pelvic diaphragm that support the pelvic floor and draw it upward during the fecation. In the case of the levator ani, this one has three parts. One of those is the one you're observing, which is the pubococcygeus. It also has the puborectalis and the iliococcygeus. In the pelvis, males have also superficial perineal muscles that support the central tendon of the perineum. For example, there is the bulbous spongiosus and the ischiocavernosus that maintain the erection in the penis or in the case of female, in the clitoris. Lastly, there are muscles in the pelvis that are known as the deep perineal muscles. Because these deep transverse perineal muscles support the central tendon of the perineum and the external anal sphincter that closes the anus. So as you can see, this is the deep transverse perineal muscle and this is the external anal sphincter. And if you want to know more about this topic, click on the card on top of this video so that you can see and check out other videos related to this one. Alright, so that's it. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to subscribe, like and share. And also if you have any comments or suggestions, you can leave them on the comment section below. Thank you for watching. And if you want to know more about this system, like the skeletal system, um, the superficial perineal uh, guess in that uh, <laughs> our shoulder get all movement for the shoulder uh, how to study and how to uh, <laughs>